Hugo Chavez saw himself as a revolutionary leader. He was a hero to many of Venezuela's poorest people, but a villain to opposition parties. They hated the friends he kept and the abuses of power they accused him of. This is how Hugo Chavez originally burst onto the world stage. In 1992, as an army colonel, he led a military coup, trying and failing to grab power after decades of more or less corrupt rule in Venezuela. Hugo Chavez was released after two years in jail, and the young army officer built his popularity by denouncing the rottenness he wanted to replace. With these corrupt people, you have to take everything they've stolen away from them and put them in prison, not under house arrest. Put them in a cell and turn them into a public disgrace. That's necessary for Venezuela's moral recovery. And the soldier transformed himself into radical politician. Finally elected president in 1998, Hugo Chavez transformed Venezuela's politics and presidential dress. Supporters were ecstatic as key industries were steadily nationalized, including oil, source of the country's wealth. President Chavez used the money largely to fund massive health and welfare programs. But many oil workers were dismayed, their bosses sacked, production steadily falling. In 2002, the whole country was embroiled in a general strike and Chavez was briefly pushed from office. But just two days later, after his supporters, mainly the poor, took to the streets, President Chavez was back in the palace. The president's very deliberate radicalism and his choice of friends made him enemies at home and around the world. His reliance on Cuba's Fidel Castro appalled those on the right. Alliance with Iran's President Ahmadinejad inflamed Washington. Using the UN stage to insult President George W. Bush divided the world. Yesterday, the devil came here. Right here. Yesterday, the devil came here. Right here. Right here. Right here. And it smells of sulfur still today. And in Venezuela itself, Hugo Chavez's unique style divided the country. As part of his regular TV show, Allo Presidente, he paraded his socialism, something he stressed talking to the BBC in 2010. Is it possible to have genuine democracy and genuine respect for the rule of law within your socialism? The only way to save the world is through socialism, but a socialism that exists within a democracy. There's no dictatorship here. I was elected three times, and when the rich threw me out in a coup, the people brought me back to power. But Hugo Chavez also presided over Venezuela's slide into recession, despite the country's great oil wealth, despite soaring growth in the rest of South America. Paying huge subsidies to provide imported food at low prices for the poor was unsustainable. Uncontrolled violent crime marked another failure. Support for opposition parties had grown before Hugo Chavez fell ill. Flown to Cuba for cancer surgery, he was visited by his political hero, Fidel Castro. How will Hugo Chavez be remembered? As a true friend of the poor or a radical turned autocrat? His rule in Venezuela polarized the nation between those who condemned Hugo Chavez as a wrecker and those who hailed him as a rescuer.